I'm Connor Rosa, and I'm joined by Ring of Combat middleweight, cha middleweight champion, Jonathan Pati. What's up, Jonathan? How you doing? What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Good, good. And uh, thanks for taking the time to join us. No problem. I appreciate y'all having me, man. Yeah. And, and I, I saw something, too, on, on a previous interview you, you did, and you said after winning the Ring of Combat title, you were kind of looking at, a, I think it was in January, a, a fight in Arkansas, and then mm -hmm. uh, in April as well in Mississippi now. You know, uh, I saw that the, I think the January card didn't happen. I'm assuming mm -hmm. the April card is not happening either with everything going on right now. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> everything got canceled, man. And yeah. what happened with that January card? Uh, the January card, the guy ended up not being able to fight for some reason. I think he got a better fight offer. So uh, mm -hmm. that fight ended up not happening. And then uh, obviously the April card due to COVID, everything that's going on, that was canceled. Yeah. How soon did you find out that the card in April was going to be canceled uh, due to COVID? Uh, actually, most recently, they uh, they tried to push out as far as they could for uh, mm -hmm. the Atlas promotion. They they tried their hardest. <laughs> the, I think it was actually like maybe two weeks ago that they finally had to cancel it because he was pushing hard, man. The the uh, the head promoter for that he was he was Glenn was super pushing it, so. Yeah, we just found out that recently. Yeah. What was your training situation like But before that happened? I mean, were you still able to do most of the stuff coming up to when they canceled it? No. Uh, our gym has been closed for the last four weeks, man. Like, we, we actually closed. Uh, do you have the exact date whenever this broke out? Uh, uh no. Well, whenever it started getting, like, super crazy. It's around, like, March 16th, I think, actually. Like, around oh. that time. I, I think a week before that, we actually closed down. Okay. We closed down a week before that it got crazy. Yeah, so we were been on that home training stuff. Mm -hmm. well, was there any, like, sense of relief when it got canceled because like, you couldn't train fully? Or was it more, you know, you were kind of disappointed? I was I, – I think it was a little bit of both. Uh, I'm not going to completely, you know, say that it was, it was just relief, but uh, – I was disappointed too. Uh, I was disappointed just from the beginning of this year. It's just been a, I, I believe for fighters, it's been a rough year for everybody. Uh, when mine fell through in January, obviously I was I was pretty upset about that because I was fight ready. Um, uh, it just sucks to have have a plan of having a busy year, and then I was expecting a big summer this summer, you know, and uh, yeah, it just didn't happen, you know. Yeah. And now you're you're in the medical field as well, so your other professions obviously being affected by it too. What kind of yeah. precautions do you have to take, you know, every day with that? So obviously, uh, I, I work in a the podiatry field, which uh, for you know, um, if you don't know what that is, that's feet. I work at a mm -hmm. at a foot doctor's office. So uh, you you'd be surprised how many people uh, actually come into those things. Everybody uses their feet every single day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of traffic in there. We had to. Uh, we, we basically are the, the demographic that we deal with there is mostly older folks. So, um, you know, we have to be very, very careful when we're dealing with the older folks because that's the demographic that this thing has been attacking. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So nothing necessarily has changed with us other than we had to, like, be a little bit more safe, be a little bit more clean. Not that we aren't already, you know, mm -hmm. we just had to be extra. Like now when people come up to the counter, like I have to make sure the counters are wiped down. We have to make sure that we're, we're wiping down all of the door handles like throughout the day, things like yeah. that. I mean, but other than that, nothing has really changed for us. We're still working. Yeah. How, how did you get into that field? Uh, man, actually my friend works there and, uh, she's just been working there for a long time and she had just hit me up, uh, what you know because it's it's hard to find a job that works with our schedule as being fighters mm -hmm. and uh you know my boss her her dr hope murray she, that's her clinic she's she works with me pretty well with uh with my schedule uh with fighting and training she knows what i do for my profession and uh she, she's a big fan of mine and uh she's a big supporter so she understands if i need to take two weeks off if i need to you know, go out to Denver or, or go out to Las Vegas or go out to Dallas and go train for a training camp. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, do you yeah. do some training in Denver or is that where yeah, you're from? Yeah, man. Uh, okay. Whenever I go up to Denver, um, I go up to my boy uh, Lavelle Simpson's gym up in uh, 
up in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody knows Elevation, Team Elevation, mm-hmm. for, uh, yeah. Justin Gaethje and uh, and Curtis Razorblades. All them boys are up there. Yeah, you just mentioned Gaethje too, and obviously the news broke today about that fight. I mean, what's kind of your take on that whole thing? Man, it's it's pretty interesting, man. Uh, I'm. I mean, you know, when when I hear a fight's going on, I'm going to be excited. You know what I mean? Uh, it threw me for a loop, though, because I, I don't know how they're going to do it or where it's going to be. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty interesting, man. Uh, I, I think it's crazy uh, that these guys are willing to to put themselves out there just to for people to be entertained. At the same time, uh, you know, this is these guys' livelihoods. This, this mm-hmm. is the way these guys take care of their families. So... You know, I support it no matter what. You know, some people are against what they're what they're trying to do. Uh, I don't understand why you would be against it. They're, you know, what I'm saying it's for your enter- entertainment. You know what I mean? I think it's pretty cool, man, uh, that that they're willing to do that for the fans and for for fighters all around. Yeah, exactly. And now, you know, we're talking about fights, and you know, obviously, you didn't get to have your you know fight in January or in April. So now that those fights are kind of scratched, I mean, how much interest do you have? you know, defending that ring of combat trap? Man, uh, I, I'm, I'm always, I always got a fire lit underneath me. I'm, I'm always re- fight ready. Um, right now it just sucks because we've been out of training and, and I'd be a liar if I said I was completely fight ready. Uh, cause I'm not, I'm not getting, you know, the sparring timing in, I, I'm not getting regular timing in, mm-hmm. I'm not getting enough time in with my coach. So I, Right now, I'm not interested in a fight until I'm ready. I'm not a fighter that just jumps into those things without being ready, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I want to. My mind says, you know, that, that I want those things, but my heart knows that we, we need a camp. You know what I mean? We need to be yeah. prepared for these things. And, uh, you know, it, it sucks doing all these home workouts and things like that. Uh, it, it's not the same as being in the gym and around your team. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Say things are, are back to normal, though. Would you like I, I mean, I know that's probably a far trip for you to go from Texas to New Jersey all the time. But I mean, is that something you're interested in defending that belt? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I was talking to Frankie. Uh, he's the matchmaker for, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for the promotion. Uh, we were looking for something in May, you know, but with, with this thing going around, we might have to push. You know what I mean? Um, I was really only only possibly looking into maybe one more defense because I don't see myself on this circuit much longer, you know what I mean? Mm. And, uh, and I'm just going to leave that there. You know, it's obvious I'm, I'm ranked in Texas. I'm ranked nationally. Um, it, I'm a prospect right now. So there's really not much more for me to do other than get, just win out. You know what I mean? Like I just need to win out for the next few fights that I have. And mm. I, I feel like I'm in a, in a great position right now. Yeah. And in your last fight for Rank Combat too, I mean, not only did you did you you know win the title, but you know you you got, earned your first uh, career submission victory too. I mean, where where does that fight rank for you? Uh, I I still don't feel like uh I, I'm and I'm not downing it. Uh, I'm not downing uh, Joe uh, Pfeiffer because he was a great opponent. Uh, the the kid he's got a bright future as long as he sticks with it. I mean, he got back up and I think he got a a win recently. It was uh, this year, right? It was in January, or uh, was it in February? Uh, he, he's a he's a great kid, man, and he's and he's ranked out there in a you know on the East Coast region. Uh, I, I think it was a great fight for me to to readjust to get uh, you know the the public eye back on me. As far as uh, skill wise, I don't I don't think that was the most important fight for me. Uh, I I feel like the most important fight for me, I kind of. I kind of uh, fell asleep on. Uh, I lost by decision when I faced uh, Kalen Hill. I feel like mm. that was the most important fight. But even though I lost that fight, I think that that's the fight that uh, that put me back where I needed to be mentally. So I think that was the most important fight up to date now that I've had. Mm-hmm. And you were correct. Uh, Pfeiffer did fight in February. He got a uh, second yeah. round uh, knockout. Yeah, see, the kid, he's a great kid, man. Uh, he, has, he has a bright future. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that he got back up and, uh, and that he took care, took care of business, you know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. it's hard to rise up from a defeat like that. That was his first defeat, and uh, he, he's a great kid. You know, I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, and I mean, he had you up against the cage a few times, too. I mean, how, how strong was he? Uh, he, he was strong as far as uh, holding me down. Uh, he he necessarily I didn't feel 
too much threatened on him holding me down or threatening me with submissions or really with strikes. He didn't really throw a lot of strikes when we were on. If you watch the fight, like he threw a few, but every time he threw, I was standing up. I was getting up to a position where he, he wasn't controlling me on the ground, if that makes sense. I'm pretty comfortable on the ground due to, due to the teammates that I, I train with. These guys mm-hmm. are just, you know, we, we got collegiate wrestlers too where we're at. So, and everywhere I go, there's, you know, there's wrestlers. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that I saw that Pfeiffer was actually up there in Colorado as well with them boys and all them guys up there are wrestlers, man. They're, mm-hmm. they're great wrestlers, collegiate wrestlers. So, um, when, when you're getting taken down my guys don't like that, don't like the strike, uh, you got to be prepared for those things. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel well prepared for any, any time that a guy gets uncomfortable on the feet, uh, when they take me down as far as defensive wise. Yeah. One thing from that fight too, I didn't hear too many people talk about it either. I didn't hear the commentators mention it either, but when he was actually, I think it was in the second round, he, he was going for the takedown. It looked like you, when he had your leg up, you landed a left hook while up and it caught him. They said that he, he tripped on the takedown, but yeah. did you hurt him there? Yeah, he was, I, I could tell that his body was withering slowly. Uh, right before that, I had started like a little blitz towards him and I had his back against the cage. His his body just started to wither. When we stood up off of, of the, the stools for the second round, I literally stared at Joe across the ring as my coach was talking to me. And like, I could just tell he was done. He was just done. Mentally, he wasn't there. Uh, I, I don't know if, if he was broken from me continually getting up in the, in the first round mm-hmm. or... Or me not going away because he had a little he had a little uh, blitz at the end, but I mean after he, he threw that, I was just like, okay, uh, you know, I've I've had your best, so I just I was ready. Yeah, and I mean, and one thing I noticed too watching that fight was you smiled the whole time. So my question is like, how much of that is you enjoying the moment of fighting, or or, or is a lot of that just to kind of like psych out your opponent? Uh, I know. For, for some guys mentally that that does mess with them but uh it wasn't to ju- it's it's nothing new that I've that I've done in my fights if you watch mm-hmm. any of my fights I'm just a guy that enjoys being in there uh, I understand that you know we we train you know these these fight camps can last up to up to eight eight to ten weeks bro mm-hmm. so we're training hours and hours and hours for a maximum that we can get is is a five rounder for five minutes so you're training hours and hours and hours and days and days and days for 25 minutes you know uh sometimes guys i understand that when we get in a cage somebody's trying to take your head off and i get that uh Mm. people might call me call me arrogant and they're like man this guy is just he's cocky looking at me he's in there i'm just having a great time man and i'm confident in what i do i'm confident in what my coaches put into me and uh i'd be a fool not to enjoy that time for everything that I put into that. And uh, that that's just what it is. It has nothing to do with arrogance or me being cocky. I'm just, I'm in a, I'm in a place of, uh, of peace for myself, whether you believe mm-hmm. it or not. Like I find comfort in, in the, in the adversity in there, man. Yeah. And when you talk about kind of enjoying the moment too, I mean, how much more enjoyable was it getting that win kind of in his hometown? You know, they had the, I, you know, you could hear his crowd going the whole time. And you yeah. kind of did that, you know, you silenced the crowd at the end. You know, what was that experience like for you? Man, it, it was it was great. At, at first, um, you know, right as we got the win, you know, I, uh, I felt overwhelmed. And then slowly as time started going by, like by the time I reached this speech, uh, I was I was humbled. I was just uh, I was grateful for the opportunity because I, I believe that 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 lifted uh, some non-believers back up uh, as far as, you know, the public eye guys that I needed to pay attention to me. Um, not, not the world, but the people that mm-hmm. I need to, to see me to get to the next level, uh, kind of, you know, put, put perspective back on, on my name. Um, as far as being, being out there, I, I love it being out somewhere else, not at home. It's less pressure. Uh, you know, we call it, my coach calls it being the villain, you know, you don't have to worry about, about, anybody that you know in that crowd other than your you know maybe your family that's traveled with you or mm-hmm. some some diehard fans but uh, i feel like it's less pressure so uh I, I enjoyed it man i enjoyed every bit of it uh i enjoyed the promotion they they took care of me very well they took care of my uh they took care of my team and uh i, I just loved it man i even love the fans i love the booze I, mm-hmm. I love the, the heckling i love it because it's just part of the game you know what i mean yeah and, and believe it or not that's energy that's energy. Even though people throw negative energy at me, like I'm, I'm soaking it up. It's positive energy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
So it was great, man. It was it was an experience, uh, and I I can't wait to be back in in Jersey, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah. How many times have you been in that scenario too, where you're kind of in that enemy territory? Uh, my fight before that, I was in Louisiana, so uh, I was in an enemy territory there. Um, I fought. I think the furthest I fought out is Vermont. It was a okay. amateur. So man, that, that was crazy. Like uh, <laughs> that Vermont trip was was crazy. That was my second fight as an amateur. And I was fighting their number one guy. His name was uh, Louis Arvidsson. Um, yeah, up in freaking Vermont, where you wouldn't even think <laughs> that they're fighting. Yeah, we were up yeah. there. No. Um, I think that's I, – I fought in Beaumont when I fought Ryan Spann. Uh, that was my, my pro debut. And Ryan mm-hmm. Spann, he's a UFC guy now, he's a, and he's also my teammate. So, uh, yeah. Um, it. I think Beaumont was the hardest one because, you know, as a that was my pro debut when I was fighting Ryan Spann. I was way in over my head. I had mm-hmm. bad management. Um, I shouldn't have taken that fight. Uh, I was 7-0 and as an amateur. And uh, Ryan Spann, I believe he was he was well decorated. He was a he was a champion. And I, I was fighting for a belt as of my pro debut. So yeah. I think that's the only fight that it kind of affected me. The crowd was way bigger. We fought in a stadium. Um, so it was it was pretty crazy, man. It was in Beaumont. Yeah. So- now you said that was your first, uh, you know, title fight. Was was Pfeiffer your second title fight, or did you fight for the title before that? Uh, yeah, Pfeiffer was you my second. Fan. Yeah, because okay. uh, to to be honest, not that you know I frown upon it or anything like that, but my coaches know how I feel about the belts at this level. Um, I, obviously, I have ambition to be a UFC champion one day, or else mm-hmm. why would I be doing this? You know what I mean? Like this, this I truly believe that I can be the middleweight champion one day, and I'm working for that. So uh, about belts, I'm never really chasing belts on this level. And I understand that it's good to have. They're, they're good accolades to have and, and good uh, things for your resume. So if it's there and it fits right with, uh, with my management and my coaches mm-hmm. and they want it, I'm fine with it. But I'm just, you know, if I get a fight that makes sense, that doesn't have a title, we're going to take the fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, 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 it's not a big deal to me and I appreciate it. I mean, the belt, I, I – you know, I was grateful, like I said, but I, I gave it to my coach. You know what I mean? Like the only mm-hmm. belt that I want around my waist is the UFC belt. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I, what I, you know, I want. Yeah. And, and you mentioned Span too, and you know, when you, when you look at your your record too, I mean, all your losses come to guys that were on the Contender Series. Two mm-hmm. guys have UFC contracts. You know, what do you think that says about you? Uh, I think it just says that I need to work harder. You know what I mean? Because if yeah. if I was ready at those times, uh. I've had three opportunities to show that I, you know what I'm saying, that I was ready. And uh, the most recent one, like I said, Caitlin Hill, uh, we dropped the ball on that one. And and I don't mean by, by my coaches or anything like that. I just mean by me. Uh, so I'll just say I dropped the ball on that one because Caitlin didn't. If, if you really watch that fight, I honestly, I could sit here and argue and say, you know, the judges got it wrong and blah, 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 because we, we've had that. We've had people say that I won the fight, all of that. But we left it to the judges and we didn't finish the fight. So if, if it comes down to it, it was my fault. So as far as the next opportunity that we get, which I know we'll get another opportunity, I just need to be betterly prepared. And I don't I don't think I was I was not conditioned for the fight because I was in great condition. I just think it was something mentally. I need to be mentally prepared. I don't know if it was because Dana was in the crowd whenever that that came, uh, you know, because we were on uh, their show looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. So Dana was in the in the in the crowd for that, and I, I don't know if that's what it was, but. Those jitters are gone. Uh, I, I've I've got more comfortable in the cage. I've I've rose up off of that. I came off of off of that loss, and I picked up two wins since then. And uh, I I just feel like I'm I'm elevating to that next level as far as the the mental game comes. Uh, physically, I'm always prepared. Uh, I'm yeah. never I'm never not prepared for a fight. So yeah, I I I think I'm ready, man. <laughs> yeah, Without I mean. Going off what you just said to you, I mean, do you feel like it's just a, a matter of time at, at this point that you get your call, if not to the UFC, but maybe like a thing like Contender Series? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Do any other promotions interest you as far as like Bellator, 1FC, anything like that? Well, uh, I was supposed to make my Bellator debut uh, a couple of, Man, I have a matchmaker in my pocket for Bellator, but... Uh, I'm just not shooting for Bellator right now. That's not where I want to be, you know? So if I wanted to fight in Bellator, I could, 
let's, let's just be honest. I could honestly fight in Bellator mm-hmm. right now, but uh, that's just not my goal. My goal is to be the top. You know what I mean? Like I want to be on the top of this thing and the top promotion is UFC. So um, that's just where I want to be. Uh, as far as fighting for any other promotion, uh, LFA gives us calls. Um, we haven't got anything from overseas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um so just just LFA and Bellator and things like that, those are those are definitely in our pocket. And obviously Ring of Combat, which is pretty huge on the East Coast. So, mm. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, and I mean, that's pretty much it for my question, Jonathan. Uh, anything okay. that maybe I didn't touch on that, you know, we thought you'd talk about anything like that? Uh, no, man, I just like to appreciate you guys for giving me the opportunity to talk to you guys and to talk yeah, to you sure. guys. And uh, I'm just grateful, man, for the opportunity that, that you guys would even take the time to come talk to me, man. Yeah, no problem, and uh, I hope you, you stay, uh, you know, safe, healthy through this time, and uh, I hope to see you in Jersey All soon. right, brother. Pleasure meeting you, man. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, take care. Have a good one. All right, brother. Bye.